A lot of you guys have been asking for information on the Akashic Records and on Akashic Record readings. And so I thought that I would share my reading with you guys. Um, I'm going to be talking with Kati and she did an amazing job on my reading and it was so packed full of information. Know that I did have to cut out quite a bit of the information because the original recording of this was two and a half hours long. That's how much information there is. So just know that when you get your reading done, it will have even more information in it than this. I left most of what I considered important. I mean, it's all important, but I had to remove some for the sake of time. So this is still long, but it's so interesting. And this, if you get a reading of your own, it's going to change your life. So stick around and let's get into it. Hello and welcome back to The Wholeness Shift. I'm Veronica and if this is your first time here, welcome. Today I am here with Kati Katrama and she's going to talk to us about Akashic Records. She recently did an Akashic Record reading for me and two of my daughters and she tried to do one for my friend Kathy, but that's a story we'll get into a little bit later. But anyways, I was so fascinated by this and I learned so much about myself and about the process that I thought so many of you guys would benefit from it as well. And recently I've even gotten some comments and some messages requesting this. So I know that this is somewhere that spirit is moving us. And so I thought this was the perfect time to bring Kati on here and let her explain this all to you. So Kati, it's so nice to finally get to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. I, I know that we, um, I, I met you because you were a subscriber and we had a coaching session together a year or so ago. And you have just been such a blessing in my life. You were always so kind and loving and so generous with your time and gifts and, and whatnot that you've been a real blessing to me. So when you reached out to me, thank you. When you reached out to me to talk about uh, to offer me a reading, I just jumped on it. I was so excited to experience that. So why don't you take a few minutes and let everybody know who you are and a little bit about yourself. Okay, so hi everyone. <laughs> I'm Kathy. I'm originally uh, an angel reader and a Reiki master and a certified crystal healer. But when I like started to go through my spiritual awakening, all of these things have come and gone like one after another. So uh, the main thing that I got interested in my, like this time of my awakening is the Akashic Records. And then I uh, researched a bit on who could like teach me all of this stuff. And I actually waited for quite a while because I didn't find the exact teacher and it's still, so hard to know who to trust, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So I kept waiting on this one teacher, who is actually my teacher now, to, to do a course. Because I, I didn't like feel that all of the other ones resonated with me. When Natasha did her course in this spring or late spring, I jumped on the opportunity and then quite recently became a certified Akashi Kregev's reader. Oh, yay! <laughs> this, uh, it is a life, lifelong process. So even though I am now like an official Akashi Kregev's reader, it is an ongoing study yeah. because there's so much to learn. And every time I go into the records, I learn more, which opens my perspective more. So yeah. I'm able to give more accurate readings and like the reference point is, is better. But what is an Akashic reading or what are Akashic records? Yes. Um, this is a quite, a, <laughs> quite a big question because the Akashic records is basically a library that holds everything. So all everything, that was, all that is, all that will be, right? Exactly. So of every soul, every being, every like entity or even every object in a way, there is an information, informational package there and um, from like past, present and future from all timelines. 
So everything is held in the Akashic records. To me, I see it through my uh, third eye. It depends on who you ask, but I see it as a eight dimensional, like esoteric kind of place. Okay, interesting. It's a place I go with my third eye through my initiation process. And then um, I see it as a library of sorts. Mm -hmm. And every soul has a book and the book contains everything about the soul. Then I open the book and like start reading basically. But I know some of my colleagues see it more like a place of light where the inf information just comes. So it depends on how you perceive things. But the basic thing is the same. It contains every information ever been. I think or it's so interesting the way you see everybody's book differently and that you and other readers all see things differently. And I think that that's such a good example of how everything in spirituality is that way. It's so personalized. And when people say, tell me how to do this or tell me what, what this means. And I'm like, that's something yeah. you have to decide for yourself because everybody and how you interpret things, how you see things, how you experience things, they can be so night and day. And it doesn't mean that anyone is wrong. They're all right. Exactly. They're just different. Now, what okay. kind of things can people expect to learn from a reading like this? What, why would someone want to go get this done? Well, first of all, I think we all want to know where we come from. So that's yeah. the But that's not the only thing because it's not like uh, this superficial, like nice to know basis kind of thing. Yeah. It's more like this deep, deep dive to your soul. What are your gifts? Where are you good at? Yeah, what have you done? Dive, yeah. sure. What have you done in previous lives that can help you now? And it's most how I most like to describe it is what can you do in this life to be more aligned? Mm -hmm. And through your soul's record, you can find that more, find out, find out that more and find the strengths and like your personal characteristics that can help you through your path now. If there are a pattern, if there's something in your record that needs to be dealt, dealt with, for example, or if you feel like there's something more to your life, you have a purpose, but you don't really like know how to grasp it. It can help you with that also, because we go through not only where you come from, but also what are your strengths and qualities as a soul. I had no idea what to expect. And... I was surprised how much I learned, how, how you really did deep dive and the things that you gave me clarity on. And I'm like, my God, that resonates with so much truth, or that really lines up with what my guides have told me. And it just felt like this validation and it really helped clarify some things in my life. I thought it was really fascinating. Yeah. Now, one thing that I, we, we learned through this, I think you already knew it, but I learned is that not everybody can always have this done all the time. Yeah. Yeah, like when my friend Kathy, you had offered to help her with one. And for one reason or another, she was not able to have her library accessed at that time. And that can be normal, too. Yes, right. that, uh, that happens. Sometimes I've had few uh, like clients who have had this happen with me. Sometimes it's about just like personal chemistry or that some readers are not fit for every, everyone. Sometimes it can be like multiple other reasons. Sometimes the soul doesn't want, on a soul level, doesn't want the reading or there is something that they don't want or is not beneficial for the like 3D yeah. person to know yet. Or um, there can be like millions of different reasons. And it's so frustrating to me because I would like to help everyone. But, but it is what it is. But, and you yeah. know what's funny is that after that, she... Um, she was meditating and she got this really powerful vision and she was like taken on this little trip and she swears she saw a library too and she was not allowed to enter she said there weren't any real words spoken but it was impressed strongly upon my soul that I was not allowed in there at this time there would be a time but not now and I'm like yeah, for one reason or another you're just not allowed to know right now so I think that that was just being reconfirmed to her that it wasn't your decision that yeah. her soul on her higher self is just like not right now basically everyone 
sort of has access to their own record, but it's not as simple as to go to the record and right. find out. But we can like get snippets, for example, through our, through our guides and stuff. Yeah. So uh, as you have done many times, you know. Yeah, so, so this uh, just took it to another level though. It was fascinating. Yeah. There were some things in there that I didn't know. I, some things you had said I'd never heard of before, ever. And after hearing them from you, I then started asking about them and talking about, them. and it's like this whole new level has opened up to me. And like, I started having dreams about this place, uh, Spica. I had dreams about that place and about my home there. And I saw the different animals or things that were there. It's because I learned about it. I asked to, to be shown more about a lifetime there. And anyways, I learned so much from you. So most of the time, they are very like full, full, full information packages. Yeah. So um, I have done readings also on a more like lighter scale without going too deep because sometimes it's like overwhelming the amount of information. But usually I do the readings in two separate like yeah. audio recordings. But because it's it's so much information. Sometimes it takes a while to process the information. Yes. And then, for example, I did one reading where the person is so like <laughs> overwhelmed by the information that we took quite a period of time in between the two okay. readings. So they could like take in everything yeah. and then, then go into the cosmic stuff because yeah. only the like general soul stuff is quite a lot yeah and and that's your first reading is like the general soul stuff and then the second just so people understand then the second reading she does is more of the galactic history star seed history yeah and usually if you are familiar with the star seed stuff and uh some of the like star seed races that are out there it's more easy to comprehend what i'm yeah. going through in the galactic version but if you are not, then we might take like longer time to go through everything. I like that because if you're willing to work with people like that. So I listened to both of mine and then both of the readings for two of my girls. And they were all mind blowing. Like the detail that you go into is fascinating. And I learned so much about them. And what's funny is that the things you would say in there, I could guess some of it before you'd say it because, and what you found resonated is so much truth with what I already know about them. And so, yeah, I just think that anybody who has these readings will be so impressed with the insight they get into their own soul and the clarity that it can help them find in their lives. So what, what we're going to do, you guys, is we're going to she's going to share both of the readings information from the two readings that she gave me. And then at the end where she's going to give you a code that you can use to get a reading from her, if you would like to do that as well. And the other thing she's going to do is share the name and uh, the contact information for her teacher. And that way, if you guys are interested or you feel drawn to becoming a person who can do the Akashic records readings that's so hard to say three times fast <laughs> um that you can also check her out because her teacher was really spectacular so we will be sharing those links in the description box and we'll talk about them at the end so stay tuned and uh you guys can get a reading from her as well um break down for us what these readings look like and what information you got for me all right and i have uh for Akashic Records guides who like uh, see through all of my readings, give me support. And also uh, I have a gatekeeper who like uh, controls on what information comes in. And then I have a few other guides who also support me. And some of them take me to past life memories and starseed memories and to other places that I have visions about, but mainly like like I work with these four guides who are not the other guides that I have around me, like my spirit guides. They are mainly just in the Akashic records. But sometimes people can also have some of their like normal guides in mm -hmm. the Akashic records as their guides. First of all, as I said, uh, it is fascinating that I see them as a book. 
every soul record because I also see them as different kind of, kinds of books. And um, yours, uh, I wrote down, I'm cheap. Uh -huh. No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't so, expect you to remember all of this. That was a lot. Uh, your book was like this light and dark blue combined with uh, light blue rays coming out of it. It was like um, this most beautiful, like uh, vibrant sea kind of. Do you know what I found striking about that when you said when I heard you say that on tape is because you know, Spomi and I are so connected. And it, later in the reading, you also mentioned that, that you kind of saw him and felt that. Well, whenever my daughters see, sometimes they see him as an actual human, but most of the time they just see him as an orb or a ball of light. And that's the color light they always see Spomi as. Oh, I just got chills. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. I thought that was so yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay, so your book was uh, this light and dark blue combined with light blue rays coming out. So the kind of like sea, sea and sky colors combined. Uh, also, I always check if you are a monosold or multisold. So how many souls are now or have lived in your current incarnational body? Mm -hmm. And you are a monosold. So this one soul has been in this one body alone at all times in this life. Mm -hmm. But this can also vary. Uh, sometimes we come across walking souls, so mm -hmm. the soul has switched. I have, I've had uh, walking souls, a couple of them, and usually it is so that they know, know it already. Yeah. They have something happened in their life that they know that their personality has changed or they have like, felt, a, felt a distinct shift. Yeah. Or if it has happened when they are a child, Usually they don't remember that much from the uh, childhood before the walking mm -hmm. happened. And sometimes we come across uh, like people who have multiple souls living in there like at the same time. I'm but fascinated by that. I would love to learn more about that. I'm just fascinated by that since I've learned about it. I I've, I've haven't had, I think, any of those yet, only walkings and the monosouls, but there are some interesting things out there. Sometimes people have like put on, for example, mirrors or shells because they're trying to protect themselves or anything like that. So that in that type of thing, it is like mandatory for me to clear them because I, otherwise I wouldn't see what's in, in the record. Uh, you are a positive soul, so... Um, no surprises there. I would be very surprised if you weren't. <laughs> so uh, you. those are the like the opening stuff that I always go through before I start the actual reading. Right. These are the basic stuff I need to yeah. check it out first. And, um, I first always start with with this kind of soul imprint that is from divine realms that we have sort of like trained on before mm -hmm. we come to incarnations. And I see this kind of realms as a type of school. I like to think of it as Hogwarts. Mm -hmm. So there is an ethereal Hogwarts out there that has multiple like uh, subjects that you can learn. And every, every realm or every subject is run by an archangel. There are seven main realms that we talk about. Realm of unity, realm of creation, realm of harmony, love, communication, truth, and power. And most of the people, you included, have a primary realm. So one realm that you have like trained the most in, and yeah. then a secondary realm. But sometimes people don't have secondary, they only have like super powerful one primary realm and then the other ones are less prominent so um, uh, we all have like trained in all of them but depending on what the soul soul's mission are you might specialize what, in one over another yeah yeah mm -hmm. and what kind of purpose they are here to deliver you might have different kind of results your main realm 
was uh, Unity with Archangel Uriel. And uh, I described this to you quite in detail, but mainly uh, Unity people are like very um, unconditional love kind of people and very like unity, unity minded yeah. people. Yeah. So wanting yeah. to include everyone, wanting to like be equal to everyone and yeah. work yeah. great in groups and just like are here to bring bring in light. Here to, to bring community. us all together. That resonated. That's one of the things that resonated is so much truth to me. I had never thought of that word, but when you said it, I'm like, yes, that's exactly it. Like I, I just want to bring everybody together. Yeah. Yeah. And also every, every realm has, it's like ups and downs. So for unity people, it's, it's not, not like unity people, it's unity, divine realm of unity type of souls, but unity people is more simple to say. Yeah, sure. uh, there are like negative polarities to this. And as I, as I explained to you uh, with unity, it's more like giving too much of yourself. Yeah. And training yourself for the collective. Yeah. So and that's, that's a hard a life difficult. lesson to learn too. That's hard to yes. get into balance because yes. I'm still guilty of that. I will just pour of myself so much and then I'm empty. And so mm -hmm. I really have to try to um, keep that in check and remember to seek balance. Yeah. With that because yeah, I'm definitely guilty of that. And many times to people who have like soul superpowers in unity or love have this exact problem yeah. to like give and give and give but not like give to themselves mm -hmm. as much. And that, that might create a few problems here and there. It always <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's very important for you also to like take care of you mm -hmm. and take care of your needs as well as. Yeah. Okay. I think the last few years, that's been the chapter I've, the season I've been brought into is learning more about boundaries, learning how to say no, learning that, if I say no to someone and take care of myself, that's not selfish. It's not, there's sure. nothing wrong with that. And so that's the season I'm in now. It's taken me a long time to get there. <laughs> that's, that's very normal for people who have divine realm of unity as their primary realm or prima, uh, as a primary, the realm of love, because mm -hmm. they are also the givers. Uh, your secondary realm, and I know you resonated with this because you work with Archangel Michael is the realm of truth which yeah. is led by Archangel Michael so these are the truth warriors who like um, are all about their own truth but also can see other person's truth and like stand for everyone's truth and the free freedom of speech and freedom of voice and like being true to their own soul and helping others also to be true to their soul so yes that's yeah that resonated is so much truth with me absolutely and many times if you have a primary or secondary realm in some of these you most likely resonate also with the archangel combined to the exact mm -hmm. realm as far as i i have seen most people have the exact correlation that they have worked with for example archangel gabriel for a long yeah. time and then I found out that they are a divine realm of communication. Uh-huh. I was surprised. I mean, even though those resonated with me, I was surprised that one of my top ones wasn't communication because that's where I've always been drawn. Mm -hmm. And I was a writer and, you know, I've been drawn to communicate. And so I was surprised that that wasn't, even though these other ones definitely resonate as truth with me. But also the communication and truth have very very much in common so yeah they seem like they would really go together yeah mm -hmm. so many times i i necessarily 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 haven't found a person with truth and communication it's more like one or the one other. Or other yeah just to to combine those it's almost like too much of the truth warrior kind yeah. of spirit now what's what's talking about the polarity and the shadow side I want to see if this, I mean, I'm sure this would make sense, but in the last handful of years, Spomi has really been working with me on not just speaking my truth, because that's always been there, but street, speaking my truth with love, because I can tend to be 
a little too direct, a little too aggressive, a little too bold. And so he works with me strongly. Like I'll have dreams where I'm like telling someone off or being a little aggressive with someone. And he'll say, you stop it. You do not have to speak that way. All you have to do is this. And he'll say something or do something. And he's like, it's that simple. Tone it down and be calm. You don't have to be so aggressive with your truth. Mm -hmm. And so does that have anything to do with the polarity or shadow side of that? Yes, yes completely. <laughs> I figured, so, uh, I mean, it would make sense, but yeah. Yeah, that's where I've been. So if the truth goes like to the other side of, side of the coin, coin, it can be a bit judgmental or yeah. aggressive or uh, for other people who are not like, who have not a uh, soul superpower truth can feel that it's it's almost like overpowering when you talk your truth. So it's good to combine it with love. So it comes yeah. a bit softer out. Yeah. But it's the other yeah. side of the coin. As I said, the, all, all of the realms, even though beautiful, the all of them have like positive yeah. and negative polarity. It's not, I wouldn't even say it's a negative. It's just the other side of the coin. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all about balancing the yeah. aspect of, of all of them. I always joke that um, sarcasm is my love language and that like, if I don't like you, I mean, if I like you at all, I'll probably be roasting you just a little bit. Like I'm always make, and so just last week I had a dream where Spomi was saying, you need to learn how to show someone love without hurting their feelings. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't hurt people's feelings. He's like, you need to be nicer. We don't have to, we don't have to roast people to show them we love them. And I'm like, well, what fun is that? <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, he's been working with me chronically on this. So yeah, time to seek balance, I guess. I hear you. I hear you. One thing I, uh, that is a negative, negative polarity about truth, because there are very people who have this uh, realm very strongly in them are very like advocate for other people's truth as well. So mm -hmm. if, for example, someone is attacking your loved one's truth, it's very easy for these people to become very like warrior-like. For example, as you see Archangel Michael with the sword and the shield, mm -hmm. it can be even like, it can seem to the other person like more aggressive than it actually is because, yeah, <laughs> because someone is attacking your loved one's truth and you won't have it. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's, I've had to learn how to like tone it down a bit because yeah, mm -hmm. that would definitely be me. I go right into warrior mode and mother bear mode and I'm, yeah, I go to attack, <laughs> like to defend, yeah. My secondary realm is truth as well. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder I resonate with you. The divine realms, realms of, of the archangels uh, yours was in the order of unity, truth, love, communication, harmony, power, and, and creation. But uh, the rest of them were kind of like equal. Love was a bit, bit more percentage-wise as the rest of them. But the unity and communication were the uh, unity and truth were the two that went out. Yeah, I'm sure you already knew this because I remember we have talked about this, but I always checked, check everyone's clairs, the main, yeah. main clairs and what are the strongest, strongest ones. And uh, I'm sure everyone who follows you can, <laughs> can like guess what your main, main clear is, but it's clairsentient, 72% clairsentient. Not surprised and, uh, at all. Yeah. I wasn't surprised at all either. <laughs> um, your secondary, like uh, Claire, was clairvoyance, mm -hmm. and then Claire audience, then Claire cognizance. So I always check these four Claires and the order that they they are. But you won't have to like feel that if you have the main Claire as a clairvoyance and the fourth one for example, as clear audience that you wouldn't be able to hear anything. Right. Because you can, yeah, I can still, I still have access to all of them. There are just yeah. definitely a few that are way stronger than the other yeah. ones. 
and also you can develop any of them if as yeah. you like but like naturally to your soul in this mm -hmm. life this is the order yes. now and then you can develop them as high as you like but usually it it's like if you are doing for example meditation mm -hmm. and you have clear sentience as your strongest and then clairvoyance you might hear something but you mainly like yes. experience it as sentiments and uh, visions right so also uh i always check your other like psychic abilities and uh, the other clairs that you might have you had three uh sort of psychic abilities combined to these clairs there were energy work energy medicine and telekinesis which It were will sound kind of, yeah very interesting but especially i think i said this to you in the audio recording the energy work and energy medicine came very strongly yeah true and so right I, as you were sending that to me i had just um made plans to get my reiki attunement my, my so i'm reiki one and reiki two now and then in six months i'll get my master and yeah so that was already in the works because i felt so drawn to doing this energy work so that absolutely also, Yeah, I also checked your soul mastery and there was also this energy master. So all of these combined, it seems that there is like a path for you in the yeah. energy field. Yeah. I always check, usually people have, for example, two, four, sometimes more of these psychic abilities that come true. We may have more. Okay. It's not like end all be all. But it's yeah. the main things that you need to know right now. And everything I like read from the Akashic Records is always the things you need to know right now. And that's that's why I have the guides in my Akashic Records. Yeah. They like control what what I can um, perceive from the client's information. Also, every soul has their own like Akashic Records guardian yeah. Yeah. there. Who, who first decides what comes true to my guides, who then also decide what comes true to me. So right. uh, it's like not end all be all, it's just what you need to know now. So they'll either say you can come into the library or no, you can't right now. And then if you get to come in, they'll say, well, you can read this chapter, but you're not allowed to read that chapter. No, so. this, I was just shown this. I was just reminded of this. When I very first started talking to my guides and they were just teaching me about reincarnation, because if you've seen my videos, you know that there was a point in time where I didn't believe in that. They started giving me dreams after I started asking and they convinced me it was real. They were giving me these dreams about this woman. So I was learning more and more about reincarnation in my past lives. And there was this like section of time where they absolutely would not touch upon they called it the dark times and they're like they would just respond better not to know better not to talk about that and I'm like but I want to please tell me about it and they're like absolutely not and so one night they gave me a dream and in the dream I was this woman I had been dreaming about and we were walking through a museum and There were showcases on each side of the aisle and Spomi was in front of me and he would point out the different he'd say This was your lifetime in Pompeii, and this was your lifetime in London. And then we got to the section of the museum where the doors had been chained and barricaded off, and there was caution tape. But I went in anyways, and like the lights were hanging from the ceiling. It had been destroyed. It was just a, the lights were off. It was just a destruction zone. And I was like, what's happening here? He's like, this is the place you're not allowed in. You are not to have access to this information. It would do you harm. Mm -hmm. And So he was just showing me again that there are places that you are not allowed and we are going to protect you from those. And that's also the reason why sometimes if a client asks about a specific, for example, if, if they have had uh, like nightmares or other kind of, kinds of dreams, they want to ask me about, I sometimes get something or sometimes um, like denied access to the yeah. exact like lifetime just yeah. because it's so painful or it's yes. so traumatic or something has happened that they are not ready to see yet 
So if there's something you need to find out. It'll come out when the time is right. Yeah. So don't rush it. Right. Okay. Exactly. Just trust the divine timing. It's always perfect. In addition to energy master, you're also a dream master. Yeah. That also did not surprise me at all. Like I have, sometimes people are shocked at, I know every, most people dream, most people can remember the dreams, but I'm like the level of dream that I have and the things I do in my dreams, it just feels like a whole other level. And I, that always sounds arrogant for me to say that, like, no, my dreams are more special than yours. <laughs> I don't mean it that way. But I'm like, you don't understand. Like, I feel like I have a whole second job or a whole other lifetime when I go into these dreams. And I would love to learn how to work more with that, to harness that more. That's also a good thing to realize that it is in your soul, the dream mastery. So it is, it is something that you can tap into more and more and learn yeah. more and more. And it, it is like special. So it is like normal for you to feel your dreams differently than most of the people because not everyone's not everyone is a dream master. Yeah. So we all have soul mastery uh, things that we are good at at a soul level. And for you, it happens to be dreams and energy work. So I did check when I first did your reading. Uh, we all all have 617 parts in our soul that are incarnated with the soul in this current incarnational life in earth. Um, usually the people have all the 617 parts with them, but sometimes traumatic things happen or some reason or another, some parts of our soul are left behind. And then you need to do a soul, re soul retrieval, uh, which is kind of a meditation of sorts or visualization process. And uh, as we discussed then, you had uh, three parts of your soul missing. That actually shocked me. I was surprised I had so few <laughs> missing okay. because I've been through so much trauma in, my, in this lifetime. I was, I was like, well, either I'm doing something right and I've been healing that already or i'm shocked that that's all there is but yeah i'm guessing you have done your your soul soul retrieval visualization yeah. visualization well like because, i had told you i also every day i was i don't remember ever being taught this it just felt like something i was supposed to do and at least once a day i ask archangel michael i say um I call all the pieces of myself and I call all of my energy and all of my power back to me and I return everyone else's back to them and any spaces that are left over, I ask be filled with light and love. And I do that at least once a day. Now, do you think yeah. that could assist with this or could have been helping with this? That would help. But also if you don't know how to do it or what, what kind of like words to use, I always... If you have this soul facet loss, uh, I always send my clients the visualization process. Yeah. I have it. So you they... sent it. I just haven't done it yet. Okay. But just know, because you have done the visualization with Archangel Michael, I just checked like five minutes before we started. Oh, okay. You have all the pieces to you now. <gasps> so you don't have any loss anymore. Nice. Progress. Yay. Then I checked your Hawking scale of consciousness. I think most of the spiritual community knows what a Hawking scale of consciousness is. Uh, mainly, hang on just a second. And that's you guys on the other videos I've had where I have the scale here where like love is at the top and like things like anger and frustration, those kind of things are at the bottom and talks about the frequency. That's basically what she's talking about here. Yes. Okay. And uh, mainly the collective is not at love unfortunately it's the collective on earth is somewhere around 200 maybe and love uh, is like 500 yeah love is 500 and enlightenment is uh, at 1000 okay. so uh, your hawking scale of consciousness is uh, 533 so above love or in the love yeah. scale of the hawking scale so very high 
and very good because we need more people in the 500 fields or up yes. to go to 5D or New Earth. Help raise that collective consciousness, help raise exactly. the consciousness of this Earth, yes. And uh, it's not like linear, the scale. So the higher you are, the more you can pull people up or yeah. like, I, I think I read somewhere that the one person, I don't even know, remember what the amount is, but one person above like 700 equals millions and millions of people. Wow. Um, lower. Lower. So you're acting like a thermostat and upping the temperature yeah. around you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 5D quotient, which, which was surprisingly low or not, maybe not surprisingly, because we all know that you are very spiritual and very like to in tune with your, with your spirituality. So uh, most of the like collective are very, very, did I, did I say low? I meant high. Yeah. I was like, low, what? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm okay. high because most like, of the, the work to do. Yeah, like very low in the 5D consciousness because they are so involved with the matrix and so especially now, so like overwhelmed by fear of what has yeah. what, especially the last year or so, people are very fear bound. Mm -hmm. So so it's very good that you have so high quotient. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the hiccup. Okay, so uh because you have such a high quotient in 5, 5D, also you have quite a low entanglement with matrix, so the 3D matrix compared to the collective. So they are like combined because the more you are in 5D, the less you are in matrix. Right. I also always check if you are, are a multi-manifester or a singular manifester. Uh, what is your manifesting power? and how comfortable you are with change. So these three things, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I see. <laughs> okay, so- uh, you're recording and you said it was a scale of zero to 10. I went, girl, I bet I'm like a two or a three. And then you said I was, yeah. a three. I was like, I knew it. <laughs> yeah. So the change quotient is like, how well do you adapt to change? How willing are you to change? And how quickly are you able to change? or change your surroundings or stuff from one to 10. 10 is the person who changes all the time and feels comfortable with change and doesn't like things. That's more like my daughter, Amelia, she's higher. And I think in your reading, you yeah. said she was more like a seven. Yeah. And uh, you are a three. So that's, that's not okay. surprising. At all. <laughs> Although the only one worse than me is my daughter, Courtney. And when I was listening to her reading, I was like, oh my God, if there could be a zero, that would be Courtney. She's at least, she can't be more than a one. And you said she was a one. And I was like, I knew it. So that was so spot on <laughs> with all of us. Yeah, I will change, but I usually have to be forced to change. The universe yeah. has to send like catastrophic consequences that force change. There is no option in order for me mm -hmm. to change because if not, I will just stay there forever mm -hmm. procrastinating about it because I, I uh -uh. what if I make the wrong decision? What if it's not the right thing? What if I regret it? I'll just stay here. Better the devil, you know, do you know what I mean? Like I you know it has to be forced on me. Even though this is just like one number. Oh, Courtney just peeked around the corner and said, come here. Um, I kept telling her forever. It was time to move. She needed to buy a house and move out of her house. And, and she's like, no, I like my house. The rent is cheap. I'm staying here forever. I'm like, girl, you need to get a new house. She got a letter in the mail from an attorney saying her landlord had just put her house up for sale and that she had like two weeks to be out. So yeah. So now I'm living with mom again, but yeah, yeah, they forced my butt out of there because I was not going to leave. I told, I'm like, see, the universe has to force you out. Just like with me, like mother, like daughter. Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, totally. And that's accurate. also good to, good to know because sometimes where, when you're interacting with people who have, for example, change quotient eight, they- That's more like Amelia. Get, yeah, and you might not get them. Or if you're like, for example- on a road trip with someone who has 
like on the whole other scale in their change quotient, it's very hard to like combine. Uh, oh yeah, land because maybe you that don't one want person to change that's just wanting to go with the flow, and I want an itinerary, and I want to stick to it, and I need to know what's happening. I'm okay with anything happening as long as I know what to expect. Don't change it up yeah. on me. Yeah, yeah, that makes me crazy because I just. Ugh. But what was comforting <laughs> is to know that that is how I was made. And Spomi used to tell me this. He's like, the things that you look at as a negative, they're how you were divinely created. These are in your DNA and in your soul. They're nothing to judge better or worse than they just are. Mm -hmm. and, and it can also be a relief to know that yes. you are not like, uh, there's nothing wrong with you. This right. is just the way yeah. your soul is. It made me feel better too that I'm just like, okay, she's not broken. That's what this I've is... said ever since my reading. I'm just like, leave me alone. I was made this way. <laughs> this is how I'm supposed to be. Let me live. Yeah. Okay. Love you. <laughs> love you. Bye. Bye. Yeah. yeah so so uh, comforting. This, what this reading did for me is it validated a lot of things that I would, I might judge myself for at times. And now I'm just like, you know what? I just need to lear learn to work with myself because the, this is just how I was made and there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not broken. Yeah. And that's also very validating to yeah. realize it is what you are. It is yeah. what you are on soul level. So you don't have to like be a society makes you feel that you have to be. This yeah. is who you are and just like work with those energies then. Yeah. Create I think your life. it could be super valuable if you're in a relationship too to have each have one done and then like you said you could learn to work together and like learn to understand meet them where they are you know like if you know you have a partner that is not prone to change you need to be a little bit more gracious and <laughs> work with them a little bit more and vice versa so I think that can yeah, be very valuable. A lot who I'm a I'm an eight I think are you yeah. Okay. yeah I'm an eight but I have a loved one who is a tree so I always have to remember to inform them yes of any like possible outcomes yes. that might happen for example on a road trip so they have all the knowledge and then they might be able to change more quickly but if I don't tell them anything I'm like okay let's change plans but they're like I can't do it <laughs> You know, so, when Fred and I were still together, I mean, we're still friends now, but when we were dating, that was one of the major things I had issues with is that he showed up unannounced all the time, which I got used to, but he would just speak of the devil. He's walking in right now, but he would just show up and say, get dressed. We're going. And I'm like, going where? And he's like, just get in the car. We're going. And I'm like, I need to know where, and I need, I need time to get ready. And like, I need time to process this. What do you mean? Get in the car and go. Is that Fred? Yeah. <laughs> Does he hear me telling on him? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's just like, why is this such a big deal to you? So I think he's more up on the eight or nine scale. Yeah. So if you are a 10, it might be super hard to like slow, slow things down and actually yeah. make plans because you are so prone to change. And it might so be really hard to be in a relationship with someone like that if you're <laughs> at the other end of the spectrum. At least if you don't realize that it is actually a soul imprint that you need to work with. It's right. not like the other person is faulty in any, right. any way. So um, also I checked your uh, like manifesting power when it comes to if you are good at manifesting one thing or like multiple things at once. Yeah. And the scale is also from one to 10. One is the person who is able to manifest one thing successfully at a time and 10 is a person who has the cap capability to manifest like all the things at once so you're a four which means that you can like manifest a couple of things at a time but don't go crazy with the things <laughs> right. like um con concentrate okay. on a few things and then when they're like full and disclosed and stuff then move on to the other other things because if you're trying to manifest too much at once and you are a four does it like dilute? 
the yeah the manifesting power is not as potent as Got it could it. be because you are like spreading it out to the thing so okay yeah and also your manif manifesting power is quite quite at a good level but you just need to remember the uh the change quotient and also the yeah. thing that don't try to do too many things at once okay one more um like number uh was about your karmic influence and this is something that i don't usually like tell the numbers because it is not like descriptive enough because we all have karma mm -hmm. at, at our lives because we have or at least any any people i have come across with we all have karma because have we have lived multiple lives and stuff because uh, you did have like a super low karma rate i did tell you that it's only five percent which is very very super low uh, usually we are from 10 percent up all the way to 30 percent or 40 or, or something like that but you are five percent negative karma which is very very low that's awesome one thing i was wondering about this when i was reading that dolores cannon book recently and they were talking about certain star seeds that come in mm -hmm. but they also are working on other projects other places they don't want you to get so enmeshed in karma here that you end up earthbound for a long time and so you're all they really go out of their way to protect you from negative karma and or pro, to just protect you from the karma cycle altogether that way you don't end up earthbound and you end up with a really low karma number so when you said that i was like i wonder if that has anything to do with it mm -hmm. i don't expect you to have the answer i'm just thinking out loud I don't have the answer, but i, I can tell you that i've had one more client who had uh, quite a similar karmic influence as you and you both have one one very big reason for incarnation combined uh, which is the bringer of light which I was about to come to so uh, I can't tell anyone who comes to me what their life purpose is but I can give you like broad themes about your life and then the purpose of your life is for you to find out. But the like main themes of your incarnation was the bringer of light and then uh, something else. And the bringer of light is something that I also encountered with this other person who also had a very low karmic influence present. So I don't know if they are combined, but this is something I no noticed. So interesting. Yeah, this might have something to do with it. And also, when I said that there is something else, as I said to you in the recording, um, there is a life theme or a life, like, broad purpose. That That is something that they didn't show me. As we discussed earlier, I can't see everything yeah. from the Akash. Yeah. But uh, I got that it might have something to do with the energy work or energy like interesting medicine or energy mastery yeah type of things so um that's that's very interesting but that's something that for yes. you to like dive deep uh -huh. deeper and absolutely find out you can. yeah there's and so the, much i want to deep dive into for sure yeah <laughs> this could like if i go went through everything and went deeper and deeper and deeper. It would be ever. never ending. There's so much. Yeah, I would be there in the Akash like 24 seven for 10 years and still, still <laughs> have stuff to go through. So um, you have to like stop somewhere. Yeah. And also for that reason, I feel like uh, many times the guides tell me what the client needs to know now yeah. because it's so vast and sure, there's so course. much. And so there yeah. wouldn't be any point to like tell everything at once. Mm -hmm. um, also I checked your other life themes there, there were self-love self-acceptance uh, unity consciousness to like spread and lead with the uni unity consciousness 
and also I got that you are here to be the clue to unite people, which you are actually doing right at this moment. So trying. Wholeness. Whole, whole, wholeness. <laughs> wholeness. <laughs> sure. So, um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So then I, some other things about your life here because before we go to other things, um, we all have like positive archetypes that are uh, present in our life right now and also learning ar archetypes, something we need to pay, pay attention to or focus on or learn from in our lives. Your positive archetypes, and I remember you said something about the first one, is queen, eternal child and nature child. And uh, actually this is funny because I have had zero clients with the queen up, up well, to this point. I was so blown away when you said that because, yeah. I mean, it's kind of a joke around here that I, I am the queen, like this is the kingdom and I am the queen and everybody recur, not everybody, but my children jokingly refer to me as the queen and things like that. And then as you were saying that this was the ta the category we were moving into in my head, I saw a picture of that gif of Rihanna putting the crown on her head, just like, and I went, the queen, duh. And you went, I've never heard this before, but it's, they said, you're the queen. And I just started laughing. I'm like, oh my gosh, I knew it. <laughs> and I was, I, I was like, really the queen? Are you serious? The queen? Yeah. Write it down queen. Then I wrote it down. And then what you said, I, I was just like laughing that yeah. no matter how the, how absurd or funny the thing is that comes true to me, I just need to take it because sometimes it's more like relevant to you than to me. Yeah, don't judge it, just do it. Yeah, exactly. But I thought that was funny. I'm like, I feel so validated. I am queen. <laughs> <laughs> and also your learning archetypes made sense too because you are a unity type of person. Uh, they are slave and servant. So like the other type, other side of the coin. So yes. pay attention to not just serve yeah. and be like oppressed, but also take care of you and stand in your power. Yes. Yeah. But then I also always check if there is a specific spirit animal that wants to come through in the reading space. It sometimes is a spirit guide or spirit, spirit animal guide. And sometimes it's just a spirit animal that has something to deliver to you right now. And you had an elephant. and um, Which resonated also because I've always been so drawn to them. And like every time I see an yeah. elephant, my heart just lights up. And I'm just like, love, love, love. Oh, cool. they're, just so, they're so divine to me. They're so smart and compassionate. And I don't know, they're just beautiful creatures to me. Mm -hmm. So that didn't surprise me. Yeah, I was surprised and, and not surprised. Yeah, <laughs> the things I wrote down were to be same time strong and emotional, wise, wise and childlike, to be re relentless and stand strong, and also I wrote because I'm clear audience. I I usually get um, messages in a like actual sentences. I wrote down, you have all the time in the world. So uh, it was like, stand in your power, but don't hurry. And also, as you have realized, it is okay to be emotional and sensitive, but also be strong. So that yeah. was very like, potent message for you there. Very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of this is the first part with a couple of things and then we go to the second part anything that comes from the akashic records you have to be very open because yeah. sometimes the information is not what we expect right or what we like find that is at that time comfortable to us mm -hmm. but it's about to can challenge you for sure challenge and over our perspective a bit so yeah you hadn't been here before lemuria and not in Lemuria, but yes, in Atlantis, which I think we discussed. And uh, then you had multiple meaningful lifetimes in Europe, in continental Europe, and also in British Isles and in the Americas as well, uh, in, in 
either Southern or Northern Americas or yeah. In I, I feel more Southern, more like. Yeah, I feel that too. Yeah. Aztec, I don't know, mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that also is, is very validating to people who have, for example, very strong connection to India or yeah. like Vikings you know, or. My whole life, before I even knew about reincarnation, in my head, like when I would hear myself talking in my head or talking to myself, having thoughts, I would either, my voice would vacillate between a Scottish accent, a French accent, or an, a British accent. Never my own voice, but it would always be one of those. Most of the time, Scottish or French. Mm -hmm. And so then after I started talking to Spomi and asking where my lives were, and he's like, most of your lives have almost all been primarily in Western Europe and mm -hmm. mostly in Scotland, France, England. And I'm like, is that why I always hear this accent in my head? And he's like, yes, that's, you know, you're hearing what's most familiar to you. This is your first time actually in America. And um, you usually had a different accent. And that's just what, when you're in a human body, that's what you're used to doing. So I just mm -hmm. thought that was fascinating. And then when you said primarily in Western Europe, I was like, yeah, that, that really yeah. resonates. And that's funny because I did check your one of your past lives. Uh -huh. I usually do this um, uh, one like human life in this like life cycle, uh, one one journey to a human life, and then one or two to other lives. If yeah. you are, succeed. if you are an other soul, I usually check more than one other life. But because you are a star seed, I checked one of your past lives on Earth, and it was in France, as we discussed. Yes. So yeah. that makes, again, perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, it was in the, I'm not sure how you say this in English, maybe it's in the 17th to 19th century, mm -hmm. century it's like 1600 or yeah. one, yeah. So uh, 17th to 19th hundreds, uh, in France, I don't know the exact year. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw that you were in a forest or some kind of like park or something, probably in a forest, uh, coming through to the kind of courtyard or a beautiful like maintained garden to this huge, like almost like castle-like house. And I felt that you lived there, but you didn't feel you didn't feel it was your home in a way because yeah. you felt like almost like trapped there. You were you were rich, but you weren't like you were rich through marriage, mm -hmm. and also you weren't in a. I wasn't happy. Yeah, you weren't in a happy marriage, and the funny thing is that. Usually when I check these past lives, I ask for a specific life that is relevant, important, and a specific like uh, time in that life because they are very short snippets. So uh, a situation that is very like important to you to know now. Mm -hmm. And the day that I saw you in was a day that you had decided to flee the premises of that. And we all know how yeah. little I like change. That had to be a big day. Yeah. It's hard to get so, me to that place. Yeah. And uh, I felt that you had been planning for a while, but this was the exact day that you were planning on getting away. Uh, I didn't like see how the escape, you, you weren't a prisoner in a jail or anything, but you felt that you were in a prison. So you weren't allowed to like flee, flee the place yeah. you were going to. I felt that you had decided and you knew that everything was going to be all right and you would be. I don't like, even know who this person is and hearing you talk about it is triggering so much emotion in me. Like I'm so, I'm trying so hard not to cry. Like, oh my yeah, no, this is just resonating so much. And I mean, I don't have any memories of that lifetime, but it just, I don't know, it's bringing something up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I didn't. Unfortunately, I didn't see how it all went in the night that you actually fled. But yeah. I had a feeling that you knew already that it was it was going to be all right. 
that you were going to get away and I feel that you got away but I don't know how and why and if you had any any like help I felt that maybe you had help but not in the house itself but like outside the house because mm -hmm. I felt that you you felt um, all of the servants because you had very many servants like you almost okay. felt that like they were like watching you yeah and uh, maybe like seeing if I felt that you you were afraid to show show like different kind of emotions so mm -hmm. anyone would like pick up that there is something going on there you the know years ago when I was first talking to Spomi I had said what do you think my favorite lifetime I've ever lived was and he said this one and I, I mean I was kind of miserable at the time and I'm like no really like objectively speaking you've seen them all like what do you think my favorite lifetime out of, out of all of them were because I'm thinking there has to be something glamorous and royal or fun he's like this one this is the first lifetime you've ever lived as a female where you are not locked under the male patriarchal power you have freedom you have your autonomy you have your sovereignty and whether you realize it now or not you are the happiest you've ever been and so stories like that mean something because I'm like, yeah, I get it. So many light workers have the same kind of lifetimes. They have like trained for this, like breaking out of the cage kind of yeah. situation. Yeah. Me included. <laughs> so uh, this was like fascinating the... to me. This is where I learned so much. <laughs> and this is the most interesting thing to me as well because there are so many things that I'm like what <laughs> yeah my mind has been so blown open in the last handful of years combined with the experiences I've had and the dreams I've had and the encounters that have shown me that it's real and I've just become such a believer and I've gone down the rabbit hole and like every single day I learn something new that I've never heard of before first thing I need to tell everyone is that not everyone is a starseed and that's that's perfectly okay because some some people are here to like come from that or have come from other dimensions to help out humanity and some people have grown with Gaia so mother nature and mother mother earth and like gone through the um, evolution process to become human and then help humanity so mm -hmm. there are light workers both in star seeds and in other souls and both are very beautiful it's just the soul imprint and the soul history is different but it's not not like one is above the other or or anything it's just like we have different kind of souls here and all are needed very much so uh, if you are having a reading for yourself uh, from me or anyone else and you find out that you're an other soul it doesn't mean that you are yeah they're way. not more than or less than or better than no. or less. it's just everyone yeah. has a role and most of times um the other souls who, who are spiritual have a very deep connection to earth and are very good with uh like with the things that involve nature and mother gaia and herbs and other medicine and shamanic rituals and stuff so it's a very beautiful path as well most of the times the other souls are more drawn to those kind of things and the star seeds are more drawn to cosmic kind of things i found out you that you are a star seed so um mm. i checked what you, what life forms have you incarnated in and again, these are the relevant ones, not right. all of them, the relevant ones. Um, you have been some kind of humanoid beings in addition to human, also a unicorn being or unicorn being in a multiple, multiple lives, an elephant being, which makes sense because yeah. of the elephant thing we discussed and some kind of feline being. So some kind of cat being or tiger being or any kind of feline being. Yeah, some uh, of those were shocking to me. And I remember telling you that the cat one surprised me or not really surprised me, but several 
twice that week before I had this reading with you, I had had a dream of this Egyptian cat. It was sitting there and, you know, it has like the decoration on and Mm -hmm. it's just sitting there really regal and it's just looking at me. And that was the whole dream. And it happened twice that week. And I'm like, what does this feline mean? Like, what does this cat mean? And then you had said something about being a feline being. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. They were building up to it. Mm -hmm. And many times that actually happens that something that hasn't made sense in the previous days makes Uh sense. I give you the rating because many times our spirit guides are preparing us for the information. Then also I checked your dimensions. So which dimensions uh, you have lived in this life cycle. And with a life cycle, I mean like a cosmic day. So when universe is first a void and then everything is created with an sort of like an out breath. Mm-hmm. And then with an in breath, everything goes back to source and starts over. So basically from Big Bang to like the whole life gotcha. cycle of the universe. So this is the time frame we are discussing, except time isn't like really a thing, but right. in a way it is, so yeah. Um, it's real to us. Yes, so mm-hmm. let's let's stick with that in, mm-hmm. in order to explain things right now. Uh, you have been to 2D, which is mainly the plant and animal realm, uh, 3D that we are living now mainly, 5D, so you have been a 5D being in some planets and then a 6D being as well. There isn't a 4D in between because you haven't had a full life in 4D. Uh, we do now go through 4D from 3D to 5D and we are living, like it's it's more like a bridge between 3 and 5, but because it it isn't here in the dimensions that you have experienced, it means that you haven't had a full life in 4D. Um, Also, um, I checked if you have been uh, kind of uh, other kind of being and uh, in in some planet and, and you have been some kind of 6D Earth being. But the more of the um, details weren't like, they weren't very clear, they were very vague. So I gathered that this is something that may not be like needed to be discussed. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then also I checked your soul orientation. And this is interesting because I didn't know about your what you just told me about the dark, dark times that you had been denied access to because uh, you have been 93% positive in all of your lives in this life cycle, but 7% negative. Yeah. And probably they have something to do with the probably times that you are not able to see. Also, I always check everyone's emotional type throughout the, the lives that they have lived in this life cycle. We have three different emotional types, highly emotional, which is like full emotional body, very, very uh, like deep, full emotions. Some beings are like highly emotional beings originally or naturally. Uh, then also there is the emotional or moderate emotional body which is like more stable <laughs> or not stable, but more like, um, what is the word? Not so extreme. And mm-hmm. then there is a neutral or a soul that is lacking emotional body. Uh, some some s- starseed races are more neutral, like naturally, but uh-huh. also there are some species that completely like lack the emotional body. Uh, Yours was uh, 73% highly emotional. So most of your lifetimes in this um, life cycle have been highly emotional and Mm -hmm. 27% emotional, no no lifetimes as a neutral 
emotional body. So I think that is very like descriptive to you as well because your emotions and your clear sentience and everything is so heightened. Yeah. This makes perfect sense to me at least. Mm -hmm. uh, then I also checked if you have had like cosmic job descriptions, so mm -hmm. to speak. So sole purpose incarnations uh, in this life on, or in other lives, you have been someone's spirit guide or you may be someone's spirit guide right now in another dimension. You are also or have been or are a council member of some sort in a cosmic That's council. That's so interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are like multiple, multiple councils, so I don't know which one. And also I got a twin flame and I know you have had videos about the subject, so it probably resonated with you. Definitely. Yeah. And also these are the, again, the relevant ones. This doesn't mean that you haven't been yeah. in some kind of other job descriptions as well, but these are the main ones that you need to know now. And the life type that you are living now is a descended life. So uh, you have come from higher dimensions to Earth. But that we already knew because you are a star seed. So it makes perfect sense. Yes. Uh, then we need to go through one more subject, which is what is your star seed origins? And this I know was very um, fascinating to me and probably to you as well. Um, I always check what is the client's first incarnation or first incarnational place, what is the life form that they have incarnated first in, and then also what is the most like resonating place, place of primary resonance for you, because sometimes the first incarnational place isn't the one that is resonating with us now the most. Uh, you have had 207, 237 lives in Sirius, and that is your first place of incarnation. Your absolute first incarnational uh, beingness, <laughs> so to speak, is a unicorn. So that you blew my mind. When I heard that, I paused it and I was like, what? No way. That's so cool. I didn't even know that could be a thing. I mean, I always yeah. thought I've heard of unicorns, of course, but I thought they were these mythical creatures and I've had to learn more about it. Like that was another way my mind was opened. Yeah. Very cool. And unicorns are very, like they are very, very highly evolved beings. And it is said that they aren't, there aren't any unicorns now on earth because earth is very dense. like heavy yeah. and dense and it's it's just too much for the unicorns yeah. that makes moment. sense yeah so that's why you aren't now a unicorn maybe <laughs> but you have been in your first incarnation cycle or incarnation and you have also been a humanoid and elephant being in Sirius as well you can find this information out from so many sources because Sirius is very like a known place for stars its origins but mainly Sirius beings or Sirius humanoids for example are very like harmony oriented people very balanced people um, and mostly the type of beings who are um, like very unity minded and they have very good collective or working collectives in their planets and um, they are all here to bring harmony, bring balance to this world. They are most likely also very tech savvy yeah. and very like, intelligent. And um, they are just like able to see what's wrong with society and how it is, how it can be fixed. So very like concrete people who who mainly are set to develop like um, internet, new technology and stuff, but we're in a very harmonious and balanced way to yeah. like help humanity, not to yeah. like- to Help not harm. Yeah. So um, that's serious in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. um, 
but the place of your primary resonance is Virgo or Spica. Yeah, this so is Virgo. what blew my mind because I'd never heard of it before, but since I've learned of it, oh my gosh, yes, all the yeses. <laughs> yeah, so um, I can read you something about Virgo. You have had uh, 300, 372 lives in Spica, in Virgo constellation, as a humanoid, as a feline, and then a unicorn. And uh, the funny thing is that uh, the humanoids that are there, at least in this one planet that I have channeled, are like, they're not angels, but they are very angelic type of beings with wings. Mm -hmm. So not fairies, not angels, but, but, but like very calm and serene and beautiful light beings mm -hmm. with wings. And um, they're like, they have very soft energy. I, I, I think I said this in the recording that I almost feel like I need to like start speaking softly because the energy is so soft and gentle and they're said to be like gentle hermits. Yeah. And loving like open spaces because their um, planets are very open and doesn't, don't have much uh, like clutter in them or very there are, or people there are times yeah. when this energy comes on me like I'm like they're doing light work on me or something like I'm so clairsentiently affected by the energy that's in my space and there's this one energy and I never was quite sure what it was but is one of my guides doing work on me but when that energy is present my voice just become so soft it's like it's almost physically impossible for me to speak highly above a whisper like I just feel so much love and I can just speak so gently and that's exactly like I don't have an option yeah yeah that's the exact thing because I hadn't like channeled <clears throat> many speakers before you and the, when I recorded the uh, reading for you I almost had trouble like speaking yes. on a yeah. voice because it's so soft. Yes. But yeah, uh, they were very, they are very like love open spaces and uh, don't usually like very crowded places or with this many people. So me. and bustle and, like, I need a home that is so wide open and like high ceilings and so much natural light and I just need to feel space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also they are not like um wants to rush into things and uh usually are very sensitive also not very judgmental usually but be because you have the truth in you you need to pay attention to the judgment thing and also speak are usually the type of person who are or who is a very like needing their own space, yeah. needing their own time. And if they don't, don't have it, it can train them very much because they need the, like they have you get used to their own time and their own space and the calm and quiet of their own planet. Yeah. And also one, one funny thing about speakers is that they usually don't like heavy meats or heavy heavy like foods all and all yeah uh, many times like sweets or like <laughs> <laughs> I know after I heard that I'm like oh my gosh yes like sometimes I was telling uh someone this maybe Fred but anyways I was like it's like heroin to me. Like if I go have a little candy bar and like sometimes I'll take the first bite and I almost just fall against the kitchen cabinets just like oh my god this is so good. I can't, um, my God, this is so good <laughs> because I just, I, I, those sweets, they're like a drug to me. Like I love sweets of any kind, any form. I could live on them. Fruit, candy. I don't care. Just give me something sweet. Yeah. I'm good. I don't like That's a lot of red meat or heavy stuff, but just my God, yeah. I have trouble with the sweets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I also that uh, in their planet, they they ate like sweet things like nectar or honey, honey yeah. kind of things, and that Love sort it. of thing. So, Love it. Humanoid feline and unicorn in speaker, which
which is very fitting to your energy right now. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. also checked if you have any other like important or relevant starseed origins and you have in Pleiades, in Arcturus that you just mentioned yeah. and in Niha. And I know you have videos about uh, the rainbow crystal and indigo children yes. and they are originally from said to be from Niha. So nice. interesting. It's just also validating because these are the main guides I have working with me at this time. Primarily, I have like Sirius, Pleiades, Arcturus, and um, the one lion being that I have, who's a feline. I don't know if you have talked about this, but many times some of the guides are actually our higher self. Well, after you said feline being and like Spica and all of this stuff. And so I asked my guide, my, my lion guide. His name is Gnopersut and I called on him and I said, do you happen to, have you lived any lifetimes with me? And he said, no. And I said, are you from that star system speak of, you know, in Virgo that she's talking about? And he said, yes. And I said, do you happen to be like a future version or a different lifetime version of me? And he said, yes. So, you know, I didn't dig any deeper with that, but as long as I heard it correctly, then yeah, that is true. He's a different version of myself what i have gathered is most of the time not all but some of our guys are are yes other aspects i know you and i have talked about this and some people say that all of your guides are future aspects of yourself and i 100 percent disagree with that and i know you said you do too it's just not that is not the truth as i know it and yeah. i know spomi has said that that is not true because spomi is not a version of me mm-hmm. um, but it, my main guide isn't a version of me but right some of my guides are right so exactly uh, this was actually very interesting because I saw you and this was the first time I actually saw like a speaking life I had been to like channel speaker a bit but not seeing anyone live there uh, of my clients so I saw you like flying as I said you had wings but you were humanoid so you were flying to your house or some kind of place that you were living in and it was in the middle of this very vast like nature field it wasn't like a field that we like cultivate anything with but it was like a nature's nature's like flower field or some kind of very vast field with some type of forest in in the background and uh, you were very beautiful like a female type of humanoid and as I said very soft very calm very sensitive very I almost feel, felt like a little house on the prairie kind of energy <laughs> from so in the middle of the vast vast open space yeah. and you were there and you were soft and you were like very loving and nurturing and everything very soft spoken and you felt very safe in your home uh i also saw you having a baby in your arms and you were like rocking her and uh, singing to her in a very soft voice and uh, you were i saw you um, walking in your garden or in the outskirts of your home and talking to the nature and talking to trees and it was all very like soft and beautiful and the colors were like very much like the colors you have on your background so very muted very nature like not very bright colors yeah very like pastely colors and very soft and airy like and, which is uh, what you're on to yeah yeah and also I felt that you were very connected to nature and all the plants and trees and stuff I talked uh, to all of it that's so funny <laughs> that you said that because people tease me because I talk to my plants I go outside and I talk to the flower bed I'm like hello ladies how are you today you're looking lovely do you need a drink and thank you for taking care of our home and oh my gosh you bless my home so much I talked to all of them yeah but that's exactly what I what I saw you doing there with your baby in your arms and stuff Aww. and uh, that that was actually the main thing I saw 
And then I kept asking why this is relevant, why this is relevant. And I asked for more and more until I get the answer, answer because uh, this, this was very validating and very like beautiful and stuff. But I felt that there was like more, there was something more. And then I saw SPOMI and wow. I didn't like see SPOMI more, more I felt him. So I knew he was there. I didn't see his like yeah. being, but I think he was inside the home or like around the corner or something. But I, I knew he was there yeah. and he was living in the life with you. He wasn't you and he wasn't in a spirit form, but he was there. And that's why I also know that he isn't your like higher aspect because he was there with you in that life. Yeah. Yeah. So, I've asked him if we'd ever lived on this life to on this earth together. And he said, no, because he can help me more where he is, but that we have had other lives. He was my spouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I saw. Yeah. And I was a bit wary to tell you that. I saw him because I didn't know, like, how would you take the fact yeah. that your child has also been your spouse? Yeah. But luckily, you are taking it. Your... <laughs> yeah, it all feels so true. And Spomi always has that soft nature that you're talking about. He's always very, his energy is very gentle and loving and feels soft spoken, just like the energy that you're describing. Mm -hmm. So that feels like his energy all the time. Yeah, probably he's from speaker yeah. as well. Yeah. I'm saying he because to me, it's both me as a he, yeah. but he might have been a she at one point also. So yeah. Who knows? But yeah, that was your speaking life. So uh, in a nutshell, not in a nutshell at all, that was your <laughs> whole reading. <laughs> well, you know and what? That was so fascinating though. And I know that people... They want to know more about this stuff and they have no idea what's included and they're always so curious. And so I think that this will do nothing but pique their curiosity and make them want one for themselves. So, and I can't blame them because if I heard this, I would want one for myself too. So why don't you tell them how to get a hold of you, how to find you? And um, we will leave a code in the description box below and go from there. So how can they find you? But it's www.lunelle.com. So it's L-U-N-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, I think in English. So I have a website uh, in there. You can book a reading with me if you like. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram, Instagram at lovebylunelle or in my like more personal account at Happiness Composed. Um, I do these kind of readings, but I also do, if a client wants after this, I can also do more of, the, more of a deep dive to some of the aspects. Perfect. But this is the like normal Akashic reading. Awesome. And also- So much client, Yeah. <laughs> oh, so much client, information, it's really impressive. Mm -hmm. This is like the most amazing work I've ever done. So it's, yeah. I, I'm learning. Every day I'm going going there because it opens my perspective as well. And sometimes um, there can be other places, for example, where we we may have been, but because we don't know anything about them, our guides give us the closest rele relevant yes. uh, like star seed origins, and that's why. Sometimes if you go to other readers or have gone or stuff like that, you might get various other like information. And that doesn't mean any of it's wrong. It just means that no, they have no. a different aspect or a different perspective. And also, as I said, it's always the relevant information now. So yeah. if you have had a uh, reading done mm -hmm. in the years, like year or do a reading after like 10 years from now, the information may be different right. because they always give you what you need to know. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, I knew and it also you mentioned the course if someone is interested uh, to do the yes. Acastic Records Reader course themselves. Uh, we can probably link the Absolutely. Uh, 
question there. I yeah. think my uh, teacher, Natasha, has openings coming up throughout okay. the autumn. So, yes, so once, there, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's a, about two to six months worth of uh, education, depending okay. on how, how slow or fast you go. But it's super fascinating work if you are interested. It really in is. Then, then we are here as readers to help you out. So. Perfect. Well, I will get all of this information. I will put it on the screen. Um, I'll put her website on the screen below here, and I'll also put it in the description box. I'll put the discount code, and I will also put the link to the instructor's course in case you want to check this out for yourself. But if you've ever been interested or after watching this, if you're interested, please don't hesitate to check out her site because as you can see, the value you get is out of this world. And so I would really like to support her in this work. And I want you guys to learn about yourselves. I mean, how fascinating was all of this? That's so. the most, most important thing that to like understand yourself more. Yes, it gives so much clarity and it feels so validating. I don't know, it just... It, I could feel it heal some things. I could feel it open my mind to some things. I could feel my self-love and self-acceptance growing a bit because I felt validated in some areas or realized that it's, there's nothing wrong. This is just how I was made. And that makes total sense. So even down to my love for carbs. <laughs> All right. Well, such a blessing yeah. to me. Thank you so much, Veronica. Same. It's been Thank wonderful. you for everything you are doing because you have helped me so much. Oh, during. it's always my pleasure. I'm always here for you. You've been such a delight in my life since the moment I met you. So okay. thank you, everyone. Yes. And let us know in the comments what you think and if you have any questions. And I'll talk to you soon. Until next time. <laughs>